All right, so today we are going to cover J3, Property Condition Maintenance and Final Walkthrough. And we're also gonna cover J4, Withheld slash Collected Funds for Repairs or Maintenance. Um, so we'll start with J3, uh, Property Condition Maintenance and Final Walkthrough. So Olivia, could you read that paragraph for me, please? So seller shall maintain the interior and exterior of the property, um, including all inclusions in the same condition as when buyer inspected the property pursuant to paragraph J1, whereas otherwise repaired and or corrected as agreed to in writing between buyer and seller, buyer and or buyer's representative shall have the right to conduct a final walkthrough of the property no later than blank days prior to closing. A, to confirm that the property is in the same condition on the date that buyer inspect the property pursuant to J paragraph J1 and or B, to inspect any repairs and or corrections made by seller as agreed to in writing between buyer and seller. Seller understands that the final walkthrough requires that the utilities be on, including propane, if applicable, at seller's expense. If the property has not been maintained or repaired and or corrected as agreed to in writing between buyer and seller, and the provisions of paragraph J4 shall apply, and buyer shall have the right to repeat the final walkthrough of the property after the repairs are completed and prior to closing. If buyer and or buyer's representative fails to conduct the final walkthrough within the specified time period, buyer will have waived, waived this right. Awesome, thank you. Okay, so going back up to um, where it says buyer and or buyer's representative shall have the right to conduct a final walkthrough of the property no later, later than blank days prior to closing. Um, what usually do we put in that um, section? Um, in our purchase contract. Does anyone want to answer? Tori. Six days. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> yeah, so six days prior to closing, um, you know, this is where, you know, we want to make sure that, you know, the property looks the way it did at inspection. Um, we really want to get in there before they release the funds. Uh, to close. Um, so has anybody had a situation where they've done a final walkthrough and there's been an issue that they've had to address before the funds were released? Anyone? Um, not before the funds are released, but like after my post closing, the sellers left like furniture in the house. Mm. And then how, what did you do? Um, I told them to come get it. They were like, oh, I, th I thought your um, buyer could use it. I was like, did she say she wanted it? Yeah. But yeah, they came and got it. So it wasn't not too big of a problem. Yeah. I mean, I've had minor issues, but, um, you know, what would happen is, is if there was an issue, we'd have to extend the closing. So sometimes that's not exactly in the cards for some clients, right? Um, extending the closing date, but if it was a big enough issue, it would definitely have to happen in order to make sure that, you know, the situations uh, get addressed. Um, I find that it's a little bit, it can be tricky. Um, I did have a situation recently that while I did was doing the final walkthrough, the tenant that was living in there told me that during the bad rains, um, it did flood um not a ton of water but enough water that there obviously was an issue um so uh you know we had to basically go in and what we ended up doing was leaving ten thousand dollars in escrow so once it closed after that if there was any issues uh you know we had to contact the hoa and listing agent they were super the seller and the listing agent were super helpful but it's just, anyway, so that's where we're going to go on to J4, um, withheld collected funds for repairs or maintenance. Uh, Shane, would you like to read that paragraph? Can be. 
Uh, J4, withheld collected funds for repairs slash maintenance. If seller has failed to maintain the property pursuant to paragraph J3 or has not completed any agreed upon repairs and or corrections no later than the time period specified in paragraph J3, the parties agree that 150% of the estimated cost shall be withheld or collected from sellers and retained in escrow until completion. The parties shall immediately sign escrow's formal withholding and disbursement instructions slash agreement confirming the withholding set forth in this paragraph. All bills for maintenance and repairs or corrections will be paid through escrow. Any balance remaining after completion of all maintenance and repairs or corrections shall be returned to seller, provided, however, that if maintenance and repairs or corrections are not completed by closing date or within blank days after closing, said funds will be dispersed to buyer. Thank you. Um, and then normally on our purchase contract, we always have off the, uh, we check closing date on the purchase contract. Um, that's just the way we have a template already made up. Um, so this is where I, you know, we had to hold $10,000 in um, with escrow um, for uh, one of my closings that happened last month. So, um, but that was the only time I'd had to use it. Has anyone else had to do this before? Hold money in escrow? after it closes? Anyone? Any buyer's agents have to do it? Anyone? <laughs> Anyone? Anybody out there? I think the key <laughs> thing, yeah, Bueller, the, th the key thing to note about this, and if you guys like to highlight items in the purchase contract and keep it with you in your binder, um, is that the seller and the buyer both have to agree to this withholding. So this can put your clients and you in a tricky situation because escrow will not withhold the funds unless the buyer and seller are in agreement to withhold those funds. So that is something that you we all need to stay aware of. And that's something that we need to make sure and advise our clients on. Do you think that it helps or hurts in a situation like this to have built good rapport with the other agent when these things arise? I mean, Deb, you can speak to that. Did helps. that help your situation? Oh yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. And that's another reason on top of the code of ethics and all the other reasons to be very mindful about our professionalism throughout the transaction. Because when the stuff hits the fan, and we have to um, you know, work with them on those tough um, paragraphs of the contract, that relationship is, is gonna help, it's gonna come in handy. Mm -hmm. So good on you for so, that. I have a question. If both buyer and seller don't agree to it and sellers are just kind of like, no too bad for your, for your buyers, is it just kind of like, well, you either, you know, just kind of accept it or just cancel or well, like if the, it was in dead situation where there was flooding mm -hmm. damage before the final walkthrough well what what does the contract say olivia what are their options for the contract right the charge is hollow. so you're talking about disclosures now amended disclosure statements you're talking about j3 you're talking about j4 let me ask can your buyers cancel at that point can they no. yeah they can oh, yeah. what could be at risk if they decide not to proceed Earnest money. Earnest money. Your earnest money deposit. So if there's $25,000 worth of damage to this property and they have 5,000 in earnest money and you guys are at some sort of a standstill and everybody's dug their feet in and decided they don't want to give anything, then you know the sellers have to live with the fact that if this place closes, can the buyers pursue the sellers for lack of disclosure damages? Yes. Yes, 
because that's in the contract. And the statute of limitations on that, somebody correct me if I'm wrong, I believe is five years for non-disclosure. So if the buyers still want to buy, they can pursue damages. Their other route would be to cancel and forfeit some or all of their earnest money deposit, right? And we know that those are options because that's all in the contract. It's all laid out for us right there in the contract. Um, I will say that is one of the huge advantages to working with Team Lally, especially as, as you know, being a new agent. We worry about these things and, and you know, well, what if it does come to that? The good thing is we have people with 17, 18, 20 years of experience, Adrian, Attilio, JT, who have been doing this for years and years, who can help negotiate. And, and Chad, who's an excellent BIC, can come to the table with their BIC and come up with a win-win scenario. So I would say that's a huge selling point, Olivia, that you brought up to being with the KW family and, and being on Team Lally as well. But when those questions arise with your clients, when those what ifs arise, your, your automatic response needs to be, what does the contract say? Because it, it will tell you. And I'll tell you too, if you've ever looked at contracts in other states, Hawaii's is the most thorough one I've seen in any state where I've ever done real estate, bought or sold or practiced real estate. Hawaii's is the most thorough. So. This is good stuff. Um, on the J3, if if the property is, is you know, if they find a hole in the wall, let's say, do, does the J3 talk about cancellation options for the buyer? Can they cancel and get their money back? Their, their earnest money deposit. Sorry, I have a whiny dog. Does anybody see, see anything? Yes. Yep. Does anybody see anything in J3 regarding buyer's right to cancel? No, hmm. you don't. Can they cancel? Yes. What would they be putting at, at risk? Some or all of their earnest money deposit. So um, make sure that you know and understand what's a contingency and what's not a contingency. A final walkthrough is not a contingency. It's not a contingency. Right. Um, but the final, if you did the final walkthrough and there was a hole and then you're like, well, we want that repaired before we close. We're not going to, we don't, we're going to stop the funds from being released. Mm -hmm. Now you're going to J4. So yeah. when you're J4, then you can cancel. Mm -hmm. Is that what you're saying? J4 shall apply. Right. So yeah. it says, right. If property has not been maintained or repaired or corrected as agreed to in writing between buyer and seller, then the provisions of J4 shall apply. So then we bump down to J4 and we read through and understand J4. Um, yep. Nine times out of 10, actually 10 times out of 10 for me, you know, we've been able to negotiate some sort of solution prior to closing that makes the buyer happy and the seller happy. And that's not necessarily because I'm a great negotiator. It's because I learned from Adrian and Attilio, frankly, Brooks and JT and listening to those conversations when they get in those tough situations, Howard as well. Okay. So when, if, if, and when it comes to that and you get to a point of standstill, what do you guys need to do? Reach out. Yeah, absolutely. Deb. Exactly. Yep. Reach out, leverage up. We'll help walk you through these, these tricky portions of the contract. That's a good you know, Laura, to talk you... to the table too. Oh, go ahead, Leo. Laura, can you hear me okay? Yeah, we can hear you. I want to cut the umbilical cord. Atilio, what do you mean by that? I'm so glad you asked. A lot of times what I see is agents coming to myself, Adrian or Laura, and you explain the problem, but you don't reference anything in the contract. So here's how I want to... Can you guys still hear me okay? Yes. Here's how I want to cut the umbilical cord. I want to teach you how to leverage up, how to reach out. The why is you have a problem, but we need to work on the how. What I want you to do is you're going to either send it in an email or leave a very detailed voicemail or be ready to discuss it. But Adrian or Laura, when a when, when we're in a transaction and an agent comes to us, what's the very first question besides what's the source? I'm just kidding. 
what's the very first question that we should be asking the agents if they're not already telling us this when they come to us with a problem with a transaction? What does it say in the contract? It's a chemo stone question. What's that? What does it say in the contract? What? Debbie, you are an A-plus student today. You get the apple. <laughs> apple for the student. What does the contract state? So you should be coming to us and saying, hey, I'm in this situation. This is what J3 states. Um, here's my recommendation to the client. I just want to make sure I'm on the right path. Not, oh, my client's freaking out and this thing didn't get fixed. What do we do? Does that make sense, everybody? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Namaste. All right. Good. Thanks. What up? Thanks, everyone. Have a great day. Deb, thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Okay. Bye.